Okay, today I want to show you how to do patterns and also give you some options with your patterns with regarding CPU performance, how to uh, effectively make your patterns, uh, especially if you're running on a low powered computer or a laptop, which especially if it's not plugged into the PowerPoint, um, uh, the CPU will be running in like an economy mode or battery saver, and so it's going to be running slower anyway. Uh, when it comes to fusion, uh, when it does patterns, uh, it really only cares about the amount of bodies you have or the amount of individual lines. The actual size of those doesn't uh, doesn't scale with computer performance. So uh, it's more the number of bodies and because when you select them, every body has to relate to another body and so it takes performance. So the first example I'm going to show you is to make a grid. This could be used for anything from like a screen door, uh, a speaker, uh, mesh, uh, mesh in front of a toaster or a microwave, uh, a grill in the front of a car, um, many things. So I'm just going to start by making a simple rectangle. Let's say my rectangle over here, for reference I'm going to make it uh, 150 by 100. I have this particular shape over here. I'm then going to make a smaller rectangle inside here and this one will be 75, well not 75, 7.5 by 5. And just for my convenience, I made sure that this is a multiple of, so like 5 goes into 120 times, 75 goes into 150, 20 times, so this is, when I fully extend this, this will be a 20 by 20 grid. That's just going to make my life easier going later, but it doesn't necessarily have to uh, perfectly align, especially I'm going to show you when we do the speaker how we can cut out shapes, uh, individual object. So I have this over here, this is my rectangle. Let's say I want a diamond shape. So I'm just going to go and this will be, this diamond is the center diamond shape I want. Alright, so this is an individual line but I need to give this a thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to offset, I'm going to press this line and so offset's going to do a line that's offsetting it. So I want this to be 5 millimeters, oh, not 5, uh, my mistake, 0.5 millimeters. 0.5 millimeters, okay. And I want to do another offset on the inside to be minus 0.5 millimeters, all good. Now I'm going to go to trim. Uh, I want to get rid of this extra stuff because I just want, I'll show you the part that I want. I just want the, the meaty part in the middle because that's what I'm going to copy. Uh, so I'm just going to delete these lines over here. Delete. Uh, I can delete the middle lines as well. I'm not going to need those. We can delete, delete. All right, so now we just have these parts over here. We can make this. So when we go to create, we can go to rectangular pattern. We can select. Uh, we can select these parts over here. Now we can copy these. So I'm just going to drag them down and drag them in this direction. Right, when we're doing a rectangular pattern, if we look over here to the side, we have these options called extent or spacing. If we do extent, uh, it shows you the overall distance, so for over 14 centimeters. Um, this is great if you have a particular size and you want to know how many objects you want to put inside it, but for my, I like doing spacing for this particular example. The tops we said were 7.5 separated and the bottom is minus 5. And we already know we're doing 20 by 20, so quantity of 20 by 20 and we can press OK. So this already is lagging my computer because the amount, that graphically it's lagging it, the amount of objects in here is really really high. Each one of those has, so there's 20 uh, and each each individual one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 lines and about 4 points so that's about 15. So 20 times 15 you're dealing with like at least 300 300 individual lines here that in theory can all relate to each other. But we'll, we'll push on, we'll get a shape and then I'll revert it back. So we're going to finish this sketch, we are going to press extrude, we're going to press uh, this shape in here and we'll also add this shape over here and we just want it to be one millimeter thick and when I press enter, see my computer is a bit laggy right now as we can see by this loading sign but once it's done all that, the lag has gone away because this is just one single object and the computer can handle one sim simple object really well. I can like rotate this around and it's, it's not laggy at all. 
uh, once you have this particular shape, you can do, uh, we can modify it like a normal shape. So let's say I wanted to make a speaker system. So, uh, sorry, a mesh in front of a speaker. I could just press a circle. I can go over here and make my speaker, say that's the speaker mesh I want. Uh, I can press OK. I can then go and I can extrude that particular shape. I believe if I go this way, it's going to want to cut. And instead of cut, I just change this option to intersect. And there we go, that would be the, the mesh I would want to put in front of my speaker. And like the same thing with like a screen door, microwave, whatever you're doing, there's that type of mesh in front of it, you can do that. Also like a drain, you can also do uh, for anything. All right, so let's just go back. I'm just going to delete, I'm going to delete this sketch. Actually, no, I'm just going to keep undoing. Right, so when we're over here, uh, let me if we just finish this trim. So the thing got quite laggy. So as I said, that was like 20, no, it was more than two, it was 20 times 20. So 300 times, that was like 6,000 objects there, which was way, it was, it was lagging the computer. So instead we have this over here. What we can do is we can still do the rectangular pattern option. And let's just pick these lines over here again. Right, and what we want to do is we want to just do the pattern in one direction. All right, we want this, we want the pattern in just one direction, we, but we also want to press, uh, if we're just copying it down, see how this over here is empty, so we want to also click this line over here. So now we're just doing the pattern in one direction. It shouldn't be as laggy because it's just one line. We can then finish that sketch. We can extrude this into A one millimeter object. Remember, this is just one body, so this is not laggy. Once we have this one body, we can go to our create and we can go pattern, we can go rectangular pattern, we can press, um, make sure we have bodies selected over here, we can select the body, we can, we have to pick a direction. Uh, so we've selected our object, we took it that direction, let's just pick this line is in the direction that we want. Uh, it's going to be 7.5 because our piece was 7.5 and then we want 20. So this is only going to make 20 objects, which in the system can handle, the system can handle 20 objects. It's not as, it's still a bit laggy. Actually, I don't know. But uh, the system can handle 20 objects. If we did an individual surf, um, if we just got one of the diamonds and turned it into an object, our thing over here would have, what, like 400 objects. And once you get to 400 objects, stuff starts to, get a bit laggy. But we can still, so we have these individual ones, these are 20, as you can see we can hide a random one of them. Uh, but we want to actually combine these all together, so we're going to go to modify and we'll go to combine. We will select the target body, which is what we're going to make them all, so we want them all to turn into body number 21. Um, and then for the join bodies, let's just go over here, we can click and drag across here, which should select all the other 19 other objects, and we press OK and they should all be joined into one singular object, body number 21. All good. This is exactly uh, what we want, and then we can do the same thing. So that is using the circular, uh, the, sorry, that's using the rectangular pattern. Let's show you some other features with other types of patterns. So this one over here, we want to start to do a circular pattern. So this could be used for something like a clock. So I have my circle, circle over here. Let's say I want to make a, oh, just make up and let me just make something up. So let's say we want to make like a, a diamond shape over here. I, I can make that diamond and then I can go to a circular pattern. I can select the objects. I want this object. The point I can either press the a circumference of a circle or a curve that is like an arc of a circle, or I can press the center point itself. Uh, let's just press this arc over here, and I can say full, or I can uh, choose a certain amount of angles, and again, I can choose the number, and so let's say the number I want, so how many would be in a clock? It'd be 12, right? So we go up to 12, 11, 12, and I press OK, and now we have all these lovely diamonds, so I can go uh, to this sketch over here, I can then press extrude, and I can uh, click all these 
individual diamonds. And because you, if you're doing this in a particular pattern, you can also choose to do different patterns. Like you can, actually I'll show you how we can make like some of the minute hands higher than the other ones. So this over here, let's say we want them to, to, to extrude it out by one millimeter, done. We have these individual parts of the, the clock. And then later we could always go and make a sketch to do the rest of the clock. We can just do a circle, let's say we do a circle for there and uh, finish. We can go over here, we can make something in um, minus one. There we go. We can we can use this as a very basic start to do a, a clock face and uh, but the point is you can do that circular pattern. Now let's let me go back to that circular pattern. And let's say we wanted to make a fancier clock where the prime numbers, as not not actual prime, but like twelve, three, six, and nine are going to have have like stronger diamonds because I don't know why not. Uh, we can do that. So let's say uh, this diamond over here. We actually want this diamond to be larger. So let's say, oh, that looks really nice actually. This so we just drag this diamond, or you could also draw that diamond yourself. Let's go and we will do a circular pattern. For this particular one, we're going to unselect the dot, we want the lines. Four lines, the center point again is over here. This one we only want four, right? Because it's going to be the outer ones. Okay, cool, that's great. Uh, but now for the inner ones, what we're going to do is we are going to have to make a line. We need to get a. We need to like design our thing in a way. So let's say that's going to be at 60 degrees. Cool. So we have a line over here, and we can we can get rid of that line later. Uh, we're going to make a diamond pattern. So uh, let's say we go down 10 millimeters. I hope 10 is less than yeah 10 is less than the other one, and we'll just make a very simple. We'll make a very simple diamond shape. So this over here is half of our diamond. And then we'll use the mirror tool. We'll select this shape and this shape. And we'll mirror it based on this line over here. So which means we should have another half of the diamond over here. Now we only care about some of these features. We want to care about, we want to circular pattern this. So circle, we want to press this line and this line and this line and this line. All right, and this one we do want to do a full revolution. The center point again, same as the center of the clock. We want to do 12, because right, there's 12 options for this one. But we don't want these ones over here because we already have our we already have our fancy diamonds for that one. So what you can do with a circular pattern is you can just tick off the ones you don't want. We don't want this. We don't want this. We don't want this, and we don't want this. Right, so we can take off the ones we don't want, we can press OK, and so now when we finish this sketch, uh, we can do the same thing over here, we can press our objects we want to extrude, uh, this one over here is going to have a few because we had a sketch on it, so then the rest should be just that. Right, and we're going to make it one millimeter, right? Cool. Now that's all right. Now let's see if we do. We can we can make an even more fancy. Before I press enter, uh, right now this is coming up straight. We can actually angle this. Ooh. We can actually angle these to be at what 45 degrees. So now they're going to look really, really fancy. And we press OK. And again, now we now we have really a really really fancy looking clock. And just to finish it off for artistic purposes, we can do a circle on the outside, we can do this and finish that sketch. There we go. Now we have nice little diamonds. And just like with our grid example, we can also make the solid object first and ro rotate it because if we look over here, our pattern objects, we can also do a circular pattern as a real object. And you can also do holes, like if you have the 
if we wanted to cut this out of a particular object, we could do the same thing. You just make the bodies and then we can use the, the cut tool. The last one we have is, let's, I want to make a Stegosaurus, right? One of the best dinosaurs, top tier, S tier. We have over here, we have a Stegosaurus. We can make this, uh, this is just the shape I picked. Let's say I want this Stegosaurus to be, I don't know what the shape is like, what is that, 10? I want to have some thickness, let's say 20. Right, so just like a wooden toy, right? That's our lovely Stegosaurus over here, but as we all know, Stegosauruses have spikes on the top. So we want to make some spikes. So let's go and um, I want to make a... Um, this is going to need some construction work. Not to relate to the pattern, but for me to set up the pattern for you. I have this, I have this Stegosaurus. Let's just make a mid-plane between that shape and this one. Cool, okay. Let's... Let's sketch along this plane over here. I just want a, I want a very simple, um, I want this line over here to be in my sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to project and include, I just want to project this geometry over here. Yes, okay. Just so I can use this uh, line in, actually I just want it to go through. I just want it to be in it. So let's say, I'm just guessing all these lines. I'm just guessing all these shapes over here. Don't be, don't be too concerned. Right, so that's going to be one of the Stegosaurus's spikes. Finish that sketch. Just like with the previous one, I'm going to extrude these two shapes in this direction, uh, but I'm also going to angle them because I want it to look fancy. No, not that way. Oh, it's not going to work, is it? Ah, oh, well, we'll just do this. We just want the Stegosaurus to go this way. We want it to be two sides. And we don't want this to join. We want this to be a new body. Right, so I have this particular thing over here. Two thing I have to show my original sketch because in this sketch I have this lovely curve that we want to use. Oh, actually, I might not even need that. So I have this Stegosaurus spike over here. I want to go to Pattern. I want to say Pattern along a path. I want to click this body that we have over here. And then the path, I'm going to press this spine over here. Right, so this is where I want my spikes to go. And just like the other one, I can drag it along. So notice over here, we they're following the path but you, they are following the path, but it's a bit weird in the way they're following the path because it is trying to keep the same direction. This star over here is this distance from this point over here. That's where it's measuring it from. So instead of identical, we want to press uh, path direction, which means it should... Why isn't that working? Why isn't it changing the angle? Oh, it might be from where the path is. Uh, okay, so we want to change our starting point. Our starting point will be right in the middle there. So now as we follow this path over here, oh, look at this. It's going along the Stegosaurus. We want to have heaps of spikes now. So when it comes to the path, the path is a slightly more difficult one because you have this dot over here, which is your starting point. Right, so if I did my starting point over here, if you see the difference, different, the distance between this dot and the hexagon is going to affect because when it when it's looking for like this spot over here, right where it extends, this distance is the same distance, and that's not going to be what we want for our path. So for our path, we want to put this line. We want to say this is actually where we want our path to start, and then as we drag our spikes over, we can bring them along the whole thing. And if we press OK, this is almost complete, but while we're here, we may as well make it super nice. Everyone knows the biggest spikes are on the top of the Stegosaurus. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the scale button. We're going to prick this body. We just want to uniform it. Let's make this 1.5. Did that work? Uh, sort of, but uh, we pressed this dot at the top. We don't want that point. We want to 
do it from this point down here. Yeah, there we go. Yes. That makes me so much happier. Oh, well, we'll fix that later. <laughs> Uh, for now, let's just let's just leave it at this particular shape. Look at that one, and then we can change. We can scale. That was at 1.5. We can do the same thing. We can press this one and this one, and the point we want to the point we want to do it through this one of the points at the bottom. Uh, that was. Let's do 1.25. Uh, we can't cheat. All right, we're gonna do one at a time. File scale. This one over here, 1.25, and the point we're gonna pick is gonna be this point down here. Right. Um, we could improve our design by making sure it's going through the body of the. Uh, we can improve our design by making sure it's going through the body of the drawing. But look, for general purposes, uh, what I would have done with my original sketch over here is when I made this sketch of this triangle over here. When I did sorry, when I did my extrusion, um, and that's how I just extruded the top part. I should actually extrude it going through. When I did my extrusion, let me modify that. When I did my extrusion, I didn't press this bottom part down here, so I'm going to actually do that now by pressing this and this, and press OK, and so now, yeah, now they're all going through. Um, anyway, so that's following the thing down the line, and follow the same rules as your your circle, circular patterns and follow line patterns are not going to get the same amount of CPU difficulty as your grid pattern, just because line pattern you're just doing it times a line so here I only had one two three four five six seven eight nine new objects made in the circular pattern at most we had 12 made I mean even if you did a compass and you did like 360 degrees you're only making 360 the problem with the grid is because you're doing it time it's like squared the amount of parts you're making so you got to worry about the CPU usage uh, on that uh, any other issues when we come to patterns, circular path? So you could choose to have them all. This is uh, following the path direction. As you see how it changes the curvature based on the path. You could, in theory, want them to go all straight. So if you wanted to make, uh, uh, what example can I? Let's say you wanted to make a bunch of uh, gates. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's say you want to make. Let me just hide these bodies that we don't need. Oh, we could also combine those together if we wanted to. But let's say we want to do here, I have a hill. All right. I made myself a little hill, and um, I then made myself a little... Uh, what is it? What did I make myself? I made myself a... Right, I made myself a little hill, uh, a thing over here. Uh, let me just move this to a location that makes sense, so somewhere like out here. So I just let's say I had this gate and I had this hill, and I wanted to uh, make this. When I wanted to copy this, I could go pattern, pattern along a path. I can press the same object, this body over here. The path I want to follow is this path over here, and so is this going to make any copies? Yeah. So. In this, this might be a particular case where I want to. I want these to all be in the same direction, if they're all going over that hill. Uh, if I want to make them follow the path direction, they're going to be curved. So, again, it all depends on what you want for your design. But that's where that's the that's what the orientation uh, thing is used for. And just like the other ones, you can also choose spacing or extent, and you can also pick your start location. Oh, it gets a bit freaky sometimes, but. Yeah, you have that. Press OK, all good. And you can do whatever you want with uh, these particular shapes over here. Right, so that is that is uh, patterns and showing you how to improve your CPU performance. Good luck.